Hello, my name is Trevor Lewis and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. This video is about Scratch and uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to learn a couple of different ways to make our characters move around in Scratch. So I've got Scratch open here and I've got a character in a backdrop. The first thing that we always do in Scratch whenever we're starting coding a new character is we're going to right click and add a comment and write out in human English what we want this to do. So I want this bear to move with the arrow keys and a lot of times you know you need to be a little bit more specific than this you can see this is a bear and it's a side scrolling sort of situ situation with this cityscape behind the bear so I want something like uh, it can move right and left only because it's side scrolling maybe I could code in some jumping or some climbing or something if I wanted to be able to add that third dimension of height but I write it out in, in English first because this always gives me a, a goal. And then if I'm sharing my code with somebody, I can explain it. I'm actually going to show you a couple ways to use the arrow keys. This first way is the most basic, but it doesn't work very well in the arcade. So I'm going to show you a, a different way of doing it using conditional statements for an arcade. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an event. So instead of when the green flag is clicked, which is what starts off all the code, I'm going to use when the space key is pressed, but I don't actually want to use the space key. I want to use the arrow keys. So it's going to run code when I press the left arrow key or when I push the right arrow key. Okay. Um, but before I get too far along here, I do need a setup. You need a setup for every single sprite. So I'm going to back up here a little bit and make, give myself some space. The setup always happens right when the green flag is clicked. I want to set my bear up for success, so I'm going to set him right here. I move him right there, and I'm going to go to motion. And that is his current X and Y coordinates. So if I put that there, that can be part of my setup. I'm going to label this my setup. Because once the bear gets going and does it, doing all his stuff, I still want, when I press the reset button, I want to end up back here. Probably also want to end up facing that direction. So let's grab a point in direction as well. Anything else, like if I show or hide the bear, I'd probably want to put a show or hide up in the setup here. So anything that I want is a starting condition. So that way, you know, I can do all sorts of crazy stuff. The bear can end up way up high and I can push this button. And when I start the game, the bear's going to always start in the same spot. So as we work, we're going to work with that. So there's my setup. With the right arrow pressed, we can just grab move. Now, when I do this, if I'm over here and I'm working, and then I push the right arrow on the keyboard, the bear doesn't move. That's because I'm actually moving the cursor here in this number spot. So I could click the green flag to get restarted, or I could even just click over here on the stage. And then when I push the right arrow key, it's going to trigger that event. Okay. So now I need to put a left arrow key in there as well. One of the things I like to do when I'm coding in Scratch, since I don't have to write these in like paragraphs, is I can physically arrange them. So I can like duplicate here and put the left arrow to the left of the right arrow. So that the way they're set up in those ways. And I can label these as well, left and right, because that can be useful so I don't have to read into the code to figure out what's going on. But let's test this. I'm gonna click over here. Right arrow still works. Left arrow also moves to the right because all they're doing is they're both moving. And right now my bear's direction is at 90 degrees. If I click on it here, you can see that's the direction the bear is pointing. So I actually want to turn the bear around when I want to go left. So I'm going to grab point in direction and I can just drag it around like this or I can type in negative 90 for left. I want to do that in this left arrow code. Do I want to do it before I move or after I move? If you think about it, when I push the left arrow, I want to move to the left. So I got to point first and then move. So now the bear goes to the left, but right is now broken because I was only moving to the right because I was pointing to the right anyway. So let's grab point in direction right and put that there. Again, you might want to label these with the comments. So now I've got my bear and he's working perfectly. But some of you might say, but why is the bear upside down when he goes to the left? Well, Scratch doesn't really know much about this sprite. It just knows that it's a sprite and that if you want to change the direction of it, as I rotate the bear, the bear just rotates like any sort of image. But there are different rotation styles in Scratch, and they're actually right here too. So right now it's set to all around rotation style. This one is left-right rotation style. So no matter which way I rotate, 
If it's more to the right, he faces to the right. If it's more to the left, he faces to the left. That's left, right. This That's probably what I want for this side scrolling game. A lot of times we also just want it not to rotate. So no matter which way the object is pointing in its heart of hearts, it always looks the same on the screen. So I could set these right here, but uh, a better way to do it in my opinion is to go down here and I'm gonna scroll down in my motion blocks here and I'm gonna grab my set rotation style and put that in the setup. So now I'm explicitly choosing that I want left, right rotation style. So I start over. Now you you might've noticed that I left the bear at 120 degrees or something like that. Now, because I hit start over, because I have that in the setup, he, he points to the right, I go to the right, and I go to the left, my bear is working. Um, you can even add extra stuff in, like going into looks, because this bear's already got some good costumes for walking. So you can see when you change costumes here, it's gonna look like an animation. So I can also go next costume on all, each of these. Maybe I could switch the costume, and whenever I uh, do a costume, you you probably want to add that to the setup too. Let's start with Bear Walk A. So now, now you may you maybe you can hear my keyboard, but in order to get a smooth look like this, I have to tap 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 over and over again. If I want, if I hold it down, what happens is at first it takes one step, and then he takes the rest of the steps. So there's a delay where the keyboard is like, are you sure you're holding down the arrow key? Okay, well then I'll just do this event over and over again. Um, so th that's not very useful when you're using a joystick. If you're using a joystick, like in our arcade machine, it simulates pressing these buttons. So what'll happen is you'll start moving the joystick back and forth like this, and you'll just kind of end up with your bear just sort of like turning around over and over again. And that doesn't usually not what you're trying to do when you're trying to be very quickly. So these are not what I would call responsive controls. If you want more responsive controls, I'm gonna do another example where this is gonna show more responsive controls. So these are the less responsive version. It's a little bit easier. It's not good for the arcade. So this is less responsive, not good for a joystick. So if we're going to load this into the arcade machine that my eighth graders built, I wouldn't recommend this setup. So let's switch things around. There's another issue that we have here, which is I only have left and right because it's side scrolling. Um, let's hide my bear. Let's go to my other sprite and show, and I'm going to switch my backdrop here as well. I'm going to switch to a top down backdrop. So here's a top down sort of dungeon crawler background here and let's go back to the cat and switch back to the code tab so now this cat I want this cat to move around I want this cat to move with arrow keys too but I want it to be very responsive for joystick right I want this to be responsive for the joystick which means I also kind of want maybe I want to be able to go up and to the right at the same time so, like, how am I going to possibly code that if it's either pressing the butt arrow or not pressing the arrow? Well, we're going to use um, conditionals for this. We also want to go not just left and right here, but because this is top down, I could go anywhere on the screen. It would make sense. So you want um, all four directions to be possible. Again, I'm just writing in, in human English that I can interpret as I code my 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 uh, my project here so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do a conditional statement so if we if you haven't learned about conditionals yet you probably want to do that before you understand what's going on here but instead of saying when I press this key I'm gonna be forever checking to see if the key is pressed so a conditional statement is an if-then statement so I always want to start off by thinking okay this is gonna be a conditional and there are sort of a structured comment that I want to do for the conditional where I have to think first, what is the action I want to happen? And the action I want to happen is movement, right? And I, I of course, want to go in the correct direction. The condition is going to be true if the key is pressed. And it's going to be false if the arrow is not pressed. 
And then the third thing I always want to think about, is this something I only want to check once in my entire game, or is this something I want to keep checking over and over again? So I'll, if that is the case, then I want to go, this is a forever loop with an if inside of it. Okay. So by writing out this comment like this, I'm going to have some basis. I haven't coded anything yet. When I hit the green flag, nothing happens. The cat doesn't move. Um, we'll also have a setup in this one. So we'll grab a when the green flag is clicked. Let's start the cat. I'm going to start the cat on this rug over here. And I want the cat to start there. And I want the cat. Let's turn the cat around. You'll notice on this this uh, particular game, you probably want the cat to be able to face whatever direction. Okay. So I will, I'm going to stick with the all around here. You can code that into place by dragging over a block that says set rotation style to all around. I'll add a comment in here and say that this is my setup. Make sure that that's labeled. You always want to label your code so you can come back to it and find it later. So now what I want to do is I'm going to need some code for each of the arrow keys. Let's do one at a time. So I need to test each one of these three things separately before I put it all together. So what sort of action do I want? I want this movement action. So let's grab a point in direction and let's grab a move block because we know that that worked in the last one. So that's probably the action I want. That's probably the movement. This is going to be move right. So let's test it. I'm going to click on this. The cat moves to the right. So that's my move right block. Um, I may want to, while I'm at this, just duplicate this. And let's slide on over here. And I'm going to put it over here on my left here. And I'm going to swap my direction. And I'm going to swap my comment. Oops. Chose the wrong angle. There we go. Let's change my comment so I don't get confused. You'll notice that I moved it to the left because I like to have it there. So if I want to make changes to it, I've got left on the left, right on the right. I'm going to put up, up above, and down, down below. So now I click to the right, click to the left. So those are working. You see when I click them, it's a little bit herky-jerky. It's not uh, what I'd call responsive yet. So now I need a condition. So how do I know if a key is being pressed? How do I sense if anything is happening in particular? That's all I'm sensing here. So I say if the sprite is touching something, if it's if a, you're touching a if the sprite is touching a color, if this color touches this color, distance to the mouse pointer. Oh, here we go. If the blank key is pressed, let's grab that out. Let's switch it to the right arrow. So I always want to test my condition separately. I want to make sure it's true when I want it to be true and false when I want it to be false. It says true if the arrow key is pressed, false if it's not. If I click on this, it just says false, 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 false. That's because I'm not pressing the right arrow key. If I press the right arrow key and then I click on it, it says true. So I can test that, make sure it says true and it says false. In which case, let's put this all together using in the control menu, a condition. So I'm going to grab my if then statement. My action goes inside. My condition goes right there. And then when I click this, nothing should happen. Unless, of course, I'm holding down the right arrow key. Then every time I click it, it goes. But every time I tap the right arrow key, nothing happens because this code is not running over and over again. That's where step three comes in. That's when I put the forever loop on. The big mistake that people make here is they just do this and they click it and you can see it's glowing and my, my controls are working and that looks great. And then they just move on like this and they say, okay, now I'm going to do this one. And they drag some of these things over. Maybe they make copies. Maybe they switch and they are doing everything just right. And then, um, and then when they push right, you go right. And when I push left, nothing happens because this isn't running. And if I hit the green flag, then none of the arrow keys work because this code runs when I hit the green flag, but this code never runs at all unless I click on it to test it, which is not what your users are going to do. They're not going to be able to see your code and click on it. So you need to have a when the green flag is clicked on both of those. So now I hit the green flag and I get both of those running. Oops. Oh, because they're both set to the right arrow. No wonder. It's moving left and right at the same time. There we go. Hoof. 
Got nervous for a second there. Nice responsive controls. If I try and press back and forth, I can just go really quickly back and forth. Okay. So that code is working beautifully. So let's back out a little bit here. I'm going to rearrange a little. Um, let me move some of these this code around, make a little bit more space. I'm going to duplicate this, put it up here. I'm going to duplicate it again, put it down here. I'm going to change the arrow keys because that's what I forgot to do last time. Up goes with up and down goes with down. Okay. So I've got all my conditionals running. My left and right are working perfectly. When I push up and down, nothing happens because I haven't hit the green flag yet. Remember, that's your reset. Now, you can't have them point diagonally this way, but you can see I can if I hold down, if I hold my joystick in the lower, in the, in those other directions, it moves that direction. Now, when you have really responsive controls like this, you might realize like, you know, this is too fast. So how do I slow things down? Well, 10 steps is how far the cat moves each time. I could change all of those to five and that should cut my cat speed in half. Let's hit the green flag again. Yeah. So now the cat is moving much slower. And you can tune your game that way. You can even use a variable to control all of those at once. So those are a couple of different ways to make your cat or your bear or whatever character you want move in Scratch. Pick the way that works best for you.